to bring the lost to Jesus for membership in his family, to develop them into Christ-like maturity, to equip them for Christ's ministry on earth, to improve their quality of life, to be a ministry to the total man. message that I want to gear toward our young people because it's talking about a character in the Bible who was at this time just a teenager. He was at that period in his life about 17 years old. God had anointed this young man. It is found in 1 Samuel. Now I know, Sister Jackie, I've thrown you off because I gave you another passage, but this is in 1 Samuel, and it's the 17th chapter and verse 43. And those of you that are working in the booth, if you can follow me there. Verse 43 reads as follows. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I dog? that thou cometh to me with staves, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou cometh to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day, listen to this young man speak to a professional fighter. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thee thy head from thee and I will give the carcass of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. I want to leave this message to you today that giants will die. I want you to talk back to me, say a giant, giant. will die. Because the God we serve is the God of the impossible. It is Jeremiah that writes to Israel even while they were in a time of captivity a time when they were being held captive. They were imprisoned. It was Nebuchadnezzar that had came and carried them into captivity. And then they remained in captivity even after the Medes and the Persians came and overthrew Nebuchadnezzar. They were still held in captivity. But in the midst of that, I want you to know they were facing a giant. Giants in my mind are human beings that are much larger than average people. Well, it is said that the character or the giant in this passage stood literally eight feet tall. There are men like uh, Wilt Chamberlain, who is dead now, but a great basketball player stood seven feet tall. Not only him, there was another giant by the name of Bill Russell, six foot eleven and a half. And then behind him came Adul Shabar. 
He was a man, or his real name, given name was Lou Alcindor. Lou Alcindor from New York City stood seven feet two and a half inches. These men were such giants until they literally had to change the game of basketball. They changed the game of basketball as to what you young people see today. And I want you to know these were black men. They changed the game of basketball because they had to spread the lane. Because the lane was, I can't remember how far the lane was, but the lane as you approached the basket was only about maybe three to four feet wide. And those big giants, when a man six foot or a man six one would come in there to try to shoot a jump shot, they would just jump up and bat the ball away from the goal. They would knock it away from the goal, so they changed the rule. They didn't want to raise the basket. They were talking about raising the basket from 10 feet to maybe 10 and a half feet or maybe 11, all because of these great giants. Can I talk to you? They said, no, we won't do that, but we will expand the lane. We will raise the lane out and we will put a time limit on how long they can stay in the lane. So a new rule came up in basketball which they call the three second time limit. And if a man who's a big man who is a giant stays in that lane too long, can I talk to you? Uh, if he stays in that lane too long, they'll penalize him by taking the ball away. These giants change the rules of the way the game works. Most people fear giants. Because giants are just not normal. Mm, there was a great wrestler. Those of you that remember wrestling, mm, all this mess coming to my mind. His name was Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant was about seven and a half feet tall. Andre the Giant weighed about uh, 800 pounds. And when he would wrestle what we thought were great wrestlers, they couldn't handle Andre the Giant because he was just too big. What no human man could pick him up and turn him. They couldn't flip him because he was just too big. Well, can I tell you something? The devil acts like a giant. But when I looked on the screen and I saw the little sign with one of the young people holding it up, it said, a bully. Otherwise, we're living in a time when people are bullied. They're bullied. Young people are afraid to go to school today because they are bullies. But the devil ain't nothing but a Oh, y'all don't hear me. But let me tell you about the text. In the text, you have the nation of Israel, which was always in battle with the Philistines. God had told Joshua, told Joshua when they crossed over into Canaan, that you better get rid of all of them Philistines. But Joshua refused to do it. And when Joshua didn't do it, God said, I'm going to allow these Philistines to haunt you, Israel, the rest of your days. And so the Philistines were constantly in battle, constantly making war against Israel. Just had a revelation, church. There are times when you come to God. God wants you when you come to him. Many times we come to God. I don't care who you are. All of us that come to God, come to God with strings in our lives. When we come to him, we want to get rid of those strings. Sometimes the strings are things in your life that you know displeases God. Sometimes them strings are habits. Sometimes those strings are relationships that are contrary to the word of God. And God is saying to you, come out 
from amongst them and be ye separate saith the Lord and he's saying touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you many times we play church we play church we're like Joshua we don't get rid of all those strings we bring the strings into the church and we allow those strings to stay in our lives and we wonder why we run into so many giants that we can't seem to kill y'all don't hear me giants that keep us depressed giants that keep us burdened giants that keep us discouraged it's because when you came to God you weren't willing to let them go you gotta learn how to turn it over to God because I don't care how big the giant is in your life. Don't care whether that, how long the giant's been bullying you. But I got news for somebody today to let you know that giants do die. Here we have a Philistine giant. A man that history says stood eight feet tall. The armor that the man wore on his body weighed 165 pounds. Not only that, Goliath of Gath had four other brothers. History says that he came from a warring family. And they had a record. The record that he had in his life was all wins and no defeats. So when he stood up, to threaten the nation of Israel he looked and seen nothing but a teenage boy a teenage boy that did nothing but hang on the back side of the mountain with nothing but a slingshot and a harp hey, help me say a slingshot and a harp he was using that little slingshot, Brother Jesse, knocking down birds. Mm -hmm. Using his slingshot to, in order to kill rabbits. Using his slingshot, not knowing that God was perfecting what little that he had in order to deliver an entire nation. I want to tell somebody today, you may feel you ain't nothing. And maybe life says you ain't nothing. But I dare you to put God in your business. When God gets in your business, he'll make your little slingshot an atomic bomb. That's the beauty of serving God. When God gets on the inside, God can use you to turn the world upside down. What makes me love God so much is that God is able to take nothing and make something out of it. David never thought he would be much. His daddy didn't think he would be much. Because when the preacher came to the house and the preacher was looking for a future king, can I talk to you? David had older brothers who were in the army of Israel and so when the preacher came to Jesse's house, God sent him to Jesse's house, there were his seven brothers. All of his brothers came even though the brothers were soldiers. Sometimes we look at other folks and we think other folks may have more than what you have. But I got news for you. The God of the Bible on the inside of you is able to pick you up. The old folks said he picked me up. Turn me around. Place my feet on solid ground. God is able to make something out of of you those boys came before Samuel the priest Samuel the priest and when Samuel looked at him he said no no I, I got this oil but the oil just don't want to pour out on them the oil represented the anointing of God but that anointing of God was not for none of them brothers but oh here was that little young teenager on the back side of the mountain 
God was allowing that boy to go through some trials in his personal life that only he knew about. Because there was a time, y'all know the story, when the Bible says a bear came to attack the sheep. But God miraculously helped him to destroy that bear. Mm, there was a young lion that came in order to try to kill the sheep. Now watch. He's just on the back side of the mountain with nothing but a slingshot. But he had something else. He had a harp. In his harp, he was doing nothing but using his slingshot and playing his harp. He wasn't bothering nobody, wasn't trying to impress nobody, but he learned to use what God had given him. I want to tell you something. God has given you something. I don't know what God has given you, but all you got to do is take your little nothing and bring it to God. Quit trying to be so smooth and so sharp, wondering why you keep failing, because you can't compete with the devil. The devil is too big for you. He's been tricking before you was born. He'll be tricking when you're dead. So you just make up your mind. I ain't going to try to play with him. I ain't going to play with him. <laughs> He's got too much on me. So, Lord, I need you to handle this bully. David ain't doing nothing but out there with his little harp. Mm, playing his harp and I can picture him in my mind when he's thinking ain't nobody paying no attention to me I ain't doing nothing but saying the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want otherwise he's just out there with the sheep and he's turning around watching a bear, watching a lion. But God was using those experiences to let David know if you can kill a bear, if you can kill a lion, you can kill this giant. Can I talk to y'all today? Can I talk to you? Because somebody's got a giant in your life. I don't know what the giant is, but I'm talking to somebody today. That giant might be sickness. Mm -hmm. That giant in your life can be a habit that you've had for years that's destroying your life. But I want you to know the God that you serve. He made the giant. He made you. And he's got what you need to overcome the giant. All you got to do is learn how to... Lean on Jesus. Will y'all help me teach this little lesson? Tell your neighbor, say, you got to learn how to lean on Jesus. You've been leaning on yourself for a long time. You've been trying to do your own thing for a long time. But your thing just ain't working for you. But the old songwriter wrote a song, said, Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth might pass away but Jesus never fails he turns around and makes you a promise makes me a promise and the promise is brother Wells I will never leave you nor will I forsake you so Lord I'm like Chi Chi's song oh for grace that has brought me through God has already brought some of you through he's already made ways for some of you he's already opened doors for you and now you are sitting like Saul you're sitting like Saul afraid because Saul was looking through the eyes of a man as an eye of a man Saul was afraid because he was the king of Israel 
and being the king of Israel, he'd heard about the reputation of Goliath. He'd heard that Goliath had killed many men. And he knew even though Saul too was a warrior, Saul didn't feel I have the ability to accomplish this. Somebody's looking at a giant of finance. That finance says I don't have no money. I want to go on to school, but I don't have the money. It's a giant. And you don't have the money to be able to accomplish what you want. You don't have the doctor that you need because they say you have thus and thus and thus and got you living in fear let the devil bully you and got you discouraged broken some man broke your heart told you he loved you and you find out he was not only sweet talking you but he was sweet talking Sadie too y'all don't hear me and so now you're broken discouraged and you feel like there ain't no hope but I want you to know I know I know I, I know I know a man from Galilee. His name is Jesus. How many of y'all heard of that name? The Jesus. He is the same God yesterday, today day and forevermore the same thing he did for your mama the same thing he did for your daddy he can do it for you cause the God I serve ain't no respect a person will y'all help me preach tell your neighbor say neighbor the God I serve is no respect a person he can bring me out he can bring you to so excuse me while I give him some praise I dare you to put your hands together and open your mouth and praise the God of the Bible cause the God I serve is a giant killer I said the God I serve is a giant killer the God I serve can make ways out of no way. The God I serve can heal your body. The God I serve can deliver your life. The God I serve can put food on your table, clothes on your back. So I want to thank him in advance. I'm going to thank him in advance. I dare you to thank him because he's going to kill your giant. I see it before I see it. Tell your neighbor, say, I see it before I see it. That old bully's gonna die. I already got the victory. So excuse me while I praise him. I'm gonna close. old Philistine <laughs> sit down I'm almost through that old Philistine <laughs> looked at that boy now watch this David at this time well I got to back up a little bit because David at this time had been anointed king but he was not king he had the anointing but he didn't have the position what am I trying to tell you? Some of the changes that go on in your life is preparation for your future. Uh -huh, and I want you to repeat that after me. Say some of the changes going on in my life is my preparation for my future. This is why you don't get upset when you're burdening, when things going bad for you. Because the Bible says all things, all things work for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. You can't see it now, but you hang on in there because God's going to bring you out. 
because God is just preparing you for something better. God is preparing you for greater things. So Lord, I'm going to thank you in advance. I'm going to thank you. I ain't going to wait till the battle's over. I'm going to praise you in advance. And if you believe it, I want you to open your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you. And as I close, as I close, I can hear somebody saying, I ain't got nothing. I ain't got no money. I ain't got no rich daddy. I ain't got no rich mama. But I want to tell you, uh, you got a slingshot. You got a slingshot. Tell somebody you got something. And this is Wells talking now. This ain't no Bible. So here's Wells saying David took what little bit he had. The Bible don't say it, but Wells says it. He wound it around one time. Once for the Father. Do that again, Emmett. Two is for the Son. Three was for the Holy Ghost. And God took that rock, hit that giant between his eyes, killed him. David took the man's sword, reached down, cut off his head, took the sword, stuck his head up in the air, said, I got the victory. God will give you the victory. Go out and praise him today. Yeah, I'm praising him because I got the victory. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. You got to see it. You got to see it before you see it. Let's give God a hand raise. Amen. Giants do die. I know you wrestling with a giant. I don't care what that giant is. Can be money. It can be sickness, might be disease, it might be a torn up relationship, but giants die in the hand of God. The battle's not yours. Do you hear me? I want you to know the battle ain't yours. It's the Lord's. Because the giant that's working on you, he can die. Jesus never fails. Count on Malone Media Productions for all your professional video needs. Services include sports filming and editing, professional documentaries and presentations, promotional videos and infomercials, job fair and recruitment videos, video consultation and training, portrait videos for all your precious moments. 
church and business commercials, as well as four camera wedding and event filming. Contact Cottrell Malone of Malone Media Productions for a free promotional DVD and quote.